She described jumping every time she heard a noise and how reluctant she felt to only cook for herself. I felt guilty. All of these events happened because I was not there. I was in the hospital. The more I spoke to people, the more guilt I felt, and I wanted to understand what they went through. I used my loved ones in these photographs as actors to play the role of themselves in my interpretation of their memory. In this case, my partner was a willing participant, but in some other photographs, that was not the case. At the time, my family lived an ocean away from me, and were kept completely in the dark about my illness and the trauma I was facing. But that did not stop the weekly video call in which they would update me on what I was missing in New Jersey, and I would lie, telling them how everything was just perfect. Factual. I present them as the documents. They're not that far off from documentation. Take, for example, this photograph of the hallway cluttered with junk and mail. This was an unknowing collaboration with the postman from the Royal Mail. Just by doing his job, he was unwittingly being an active participant in this photograph. It is this line I straddle in my photography. The distinction between reality and fiction are pushed and blurred to the point that I myself may not remember which is which. Earlier I called myself the director of these photographs. This is because they are heavily inspired by the cinema, as evidenced by the aesthetics. The heavily dramatic lighting, the deep contrast, and the hidden elements of a story, a story in which the audience is meant to put together. The concept of memory in my photography evolved when I returned to Guyana earlier this year. No longer was I aiming to make sense of some of a time period using other people's recollection. I now felt the tension coming from within. I left Guyana when I was four years old, and as you would suspect, I did not have much of an impression of the time I spent here. My understanding of Guyana is that of somebody who has lived outside of its borders for the majority of their life. And the photographs I began to take became representations of the tensions between Guyanese traditions as I knew them, primarily firsthand as a part of an expatriated family, and Guyanese traditions as they exist within Guyana. I was presented with a setting that was much different than the one the four-year-old boy left behind some 24 years ago. It was full of relics from the past, muddled with technologies of the present. As you probably have noticed already, the aesthetic quality of these photographs are very similar to the previous. And that is no mistake. They live within the same realm. The realm of cinema, documentation, biography, fiction. Some of these photographs are fully staged, some partially, while others have no stage element whatsoever. But they're all treated the same. Neither is less authentic than the previous, this photograph shows the act of burning to clear a domestic area, an idea that was foreign to me. But what captivated me was the almost ceremonious carrying out of burning of rubbish. For some, it's a nightly tradition. There was also fire that I knew. Fire from a tradition that changes very little, no matter which part of the world you're in. This was the first Diwali I took part of since returning to Guyana, and it was exactly as I remembered. I accompanied my cousin as he observed it with his family, and it was no different than when I was a little boy. Waking up early to the vermicelli cake that my mother had made. Waiting all day in anticipation to light the sparklers that were inconvenient and placed outside of my reach. And accompanying my mother as she carefully placed lit tears around the house, both inside and out. The noise was much louder than I remembered, but the emotion was still there. The nostalgia was clear. As we know, nostalgia is a romanticism of memory. It is not intentional and is often completely outside of our control. There's a term in photography called the punctum. Conceptualized by Roland Barthes, a theorist and philosopher, the punctum is the detail from an image that, unbeknownst to the viewer, jumps out, latches on, and creates a direct relationship between them and the photograph. The more I gaze at the scene of the man looking onto the ocean, the more I feel transferred to his position. 
I know this feeling well, as I'm sure many of you here do. And it does not take long for me to feel the subtle breeze blowing along my skin, to get completely lost in my own thoughts. The punctum, by very definition, is subjective. So it may not be universally felt. But when it is, you will know, because it transforms you. This is the seawall view from the village of Eiffelt, which is located on the west coast. Across the body of water is Leguan. Leguan is the island my mother grew up on, and Eiffelt is the village my father did, and is where I currently live. There is a strange energy emanating from this calm post-sunset sea. It is almost as if I am conflicted with enjoying its beauty, just as I am conflicted with the village in itself. Eiffel is the place I spent the four, first four years of my life. It is currently the home of some extended family I see on a daily basis, and even more family that I do not know of, and probably never will. For all intents and purposes, this village is the exact same as I left it. The same people still live in the same houses, the same shops still sell the same trees, and even the same trees still hang over the same old wooden fences with their fruits at arm's length. I have a faint memory of walking on this land when the tide used to go out for what seemed like miles. With every step I took, I sank deeper into the softened earth. I asked my uncle, who lives just meters away from this location, if the water still went out that far. He told me it's been years since he saw that. One of the most intriguing aspects of returning to Guyana is to observe religion and cultures as they are practiced by my extended family versus how my immediate family practices them. Just up the road from where I live is my uncle's home, and is where I often spend my weekends. It is there I regularly hear stories of what it's like to actually growing up in the village, from poverty to politics and everything in between. And now that life is more comfortable and secure, I get lessons on what actually matters, often with not so subtle hints on who to vote for. But what I find absolutely remarkable about my uncle's generation is the modesty. According to him, as long as you have your family, your house, your religion, everything in life is just a bonus. It is almost impossible to take a photograph in Guyana without having some aspect of the water included. I cross the Demerara every morning on the way to work, and no matter how many times I take the speed boats, the journey is seldom the same. Whether it's trying not to trip over yourself while entering the boat, or having the engines randomly cut off in the middle of the crossing, then sitting patiently as everybody stares and begins yelling at the captain. <laughs> I enjoy the speed boats. It's one of the few places that I can depend on the price of being the exact same every time. As you may have guessed, I've overpaid from everything from minibuses to groceries because of this accent. <laughs> it took a couple of times to figure out why the price of the banana seems to change daily. I feel this photograph is emblematic of my experiences returning to Guyana and adjusting to day-to-day -day life. It shows the tensions between what I felt internally and what was externally displayed. It was originally taken to accompany the series we saw earlier in this presentation, with emphasis placed on technological dependence and using technology as a placeholder for the people and the relationships we keep. But even though this image was carefully planned and staged, it's probably the most authentic photograph I've shown you today. It demonstrates my disconnect from reality while implying the refusal to accept. I took this photograph shortly after returning and I was conflicted. I still am. This is the reason why my response changes every time I'm asked how long I plan on staying there. I am trapped between ideal moments from the past, conflicting moments from the present, and an unsure expectation from the future. These photographs I present to you today both stage and not stage, were conceptualized to serve a particular purpose. And that purpose was to challenge the reliability of our memories. How, as time moves forward, we forget the specifics and create an idealized version, a factually incorrect recollection of our lives. However, sometimes while sitting on the bus during the half an hour commute from Eiffel to Wiedenhoek, I find myself drifting off. As I slip outside of consciousness, I begin to think and to remember. And between the thoughts of what's for dinner and the situations that I fabricate for myself in my mind are not the memories I spent hours recreating and photographing. It's not the moments that define myself in any way. 
It's the images that I spent just seconds capturing. It's the image of me waking up early to make a treat for someone special. It's me finding the one place in London that serves up an authentic New York slice. It's me holding on to the moments that made me feel like everything would be just fine. Thank you very much.